Here on Keep Cups website, I can pick from a variety of different colors for my reusable glass cup thingy. We have black and we have almond and we even have the egg for some reason. Color options are incredibly common across different e-commerce sites. Here on Apple's website, I can choose succulent for my Apple Watch band color. And on Balroy, I can choose saltbush for my bag color. Now in Webflow, we can let customers choose a variant color from a dropdown or from a list of buttons. But we can't currently just show a color block for that variant. Kind of. So today, we're going to look at a workaround that we can use in Webflow so that we can use any product color or image as a preview instead of just text. So let's jump in. All right, so we're in Webflow and we have an e-commerce project. And so let's quickly pop into our products and find a one with the different options. And so I have a bunch of different colors set up. I have gold, silver, rose gold, and shiny greenish starlight. And each one has its own variant for that product. So what we want to do is change the content in each button so that it actually reflects the color. So Webflow doesn't actually love us trying to edit these buttons. So if I try to drag an image into this button, it's not going to let us. So what we're instead gonna do is have our button selected and we'll just click the image to add it. And so this is the image that we're gonna use for any color image or icon that we want for the different color. But before we do that, we'll just move this text out of the way. I'm gonna to go to customize it and it's actually gonna be absolute. We're gonna take it out of the button. Left is gonna be zero and top is also going to be zero. And then we wanna to absolute to this option box. Let's use our option list and change from static to relative. And now I can click on the name of our color and we're gonna move it over. Let's do 40 pixels, no nope, more than that. 80, too much, maybe about 60. That'll do well for now. And for the text for our color, we only wanna show the text of the color that's actually selected. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna name this actually, and then we're gonna change where that text color is coming from. So we'll click on our button. This is our option button. And the color of our text is actually gonna be transparent. So we're not gonna be able to see any of the text colors. But then what we'll do is we'll click on our drop down, and we'll get selected. And now when one of the colors is selected, the color text is going to be black. And so if I quickly preview this now, I can see that this text is actually gonna change based on whatever color is selected. One last fix for the color, this text is actually still selectable and it's just gonna be selecting the topmost color. So what I'll do is I'll click on this colored text. I'll make sure the cursor is just default. And then I will make it negative one Z index and that means we're not going to be able to click on it, but we can still see the actual title of that color. And now on to the buttons themselves. Let me click on my option button and we're going to take away all the padding. Actually, let's put in about four padding, just a little bit. And our button is going to have a hundred percent radius. That's probably too much, but that's fine for now. And the width, how big is 40? I think that's a great size. Let's use 40. And then we're also going to round out the image in the center. Let's do 100 again, and let's just call this option button image. I'll quickly go back to my option button. I just want a transparent background, and I want the text outline to be a little bit more subtle when it's not selected. Maybe a, a light brown or a kind of gold. Maybe it's somewhere, somewhere around there. And now we can add in the color images themselves. Now in terms of creating these images, I like to use Figma and that way we can change it to any kind of way that we want. I've done a couple of options here, kind of showing a, a split with the color and the material or just the straight color itself. And so that's what we're using for our images. Let me pull in one of these now, I'll go to settings and I'll choose the gold for our first color. And oh no, that's now being used for every single color. So what we'll do is we'll use a condition, we'll say that only show this color if the name equals gold. Save that, and now we'll do this for each color. I'm just gonna copy, paste, paste, paste. And then this second one, it's gonna be our silver, and it's only gonna be shown if the name is silver. That's the option name, not the actual name of the product itself. And then our third one, it's gonna be rose gold. Select the image first, down to the color. And then finally our green, specifically our shiny greenish starlight. Let's paste that in. And now we have our images set up for each color. And the only last thing I'll do is to check how it's looking when it's active now. And I'm gonna click 
selected. Only thing I'll change is we'll keep this background transparent and we'll make the outline black so that we know that it's selected. And so now I can preview it. And when we click on gold, we have gold selected, silver is silver, rose gold is rose gold, and then we have shiny greenish starlight. So that's how we can create proper color images or swatches for our different options in Webflow e-commerce. And if you think that for your use case that this solution isn't gonna work for some reason, I'll link a completely different implementation from the Webflow forum that uses custom code instead. So you can find that in the description. So thanks for watching. Play this video backwards to hear a secret message and I'll see you on the next one.